It's ridiculous! Thomas's frustration echoed around the station, but did nothing to arouse interest in his case. Percy snored a touch louder in his siding, and Annie and Clarabelle sighed, knowing what was coming next. If people wanted to see my branch line, why not let me show them? I know the line and our timetable better than anyone. These enthusiast specials are nonsense. Imagine making me wait at the cattle dock. As we've told you countless times, Annie sighed, the fat controller promised we wouldn't be late, and we're not. I do agree about the cattle dock, shivered Clarabelle, who didn't much care for cows. But never mind enthusiasts. We have our own passengers to look after. Well, of course I'll be looking after them, Thomas huffed. I have a duty to my branch line, but does the engine pulling these trains respect that? A familiar whistle echoed in the distance, and Thomas smirked knowingly. <laughs> I suppose that answers my question. With more pomp than the circumstances called for, James rolled proudly into the station, whistling once more. Salutations, little engines! Passengers spilled from the coaches, cameras clicking and flashing all the while. Percy, who'd been jolted awake, merely grunted and went back to sleep. So, Thomas grinned, the Fat Controller lets any engine pull specials these days, does he? Well, he could have chosen any engine, but he chose me, James Prim. You certainly wouldn't want Gordon or Henry bumbling up your line, would you? Absolutely not, Thomas smiled, fully aware neither engine physically could, a fact James seemed to have forgotten. All the same, he went on, it is my line. I should be the one pulling that train. At this, James burst into laughter. Thomas was incensed. What's so funny? You, James replied, regaining composure, seem to enjoy leaving things behind. Your crew, your guard, even your whole train. I ensure they travel the whole line and give them a smooth, safe ride. You? Safe? Thomas chuckled. What do you say, Percy? Shall we take stock? Oh, I already took the goods this morning. Percy yawned grumpily. Leave me alone. Not rolling stock, Thomas snorted. I meant taking stock of James's safety record. Let's see. There's the tar wagons. Only happened because Toby distracted me, James quipped. Slipping down Gordon's Hill? Well, I can't control the weather, can I? Your truck's breaking away on Gordon's Hill? Faulty coupling. Your truck's pushing you down Gordon's Hill? Behavior issues. Your brake block's catching fire. You're pushing it. The boot laces. And now you've crossed the line, James exploded. Well, if you can't take the heat, drop your fire, Thomas retorted. <laughs> Says the engine who fusses when he doesn't get every special the fat controller schedules. No wonder he doesn't trust you with them. He clearly trusts me enough to give me my own branch line, unlike some engines I could mention. I'm the only reason you have a branch line to begin with, James sneered. Without me, you couldn't have toddled off to play the little hero. You'd have remained a mere shunter. Perhaps I should have left you in that field, Thomas spat. With a face like that, you'd be better off as a scarecrow. It took their drivers, firemen, the station master, and several porters to break up the argument. With much whooshing and snorting, the quarreling engines went about their work, brooding all the while. Bewildered enthusiasts photographed the whole ordeal. Poor Percy found himself an unwilling sounding board. Whenever he met them, Thomas and James would complain bitterly about each other. Never thought I'd prefer the company of trucks, the little green engine muttered, scurrying off before another tirade was launched at him. Some days later, Thomas was still in a foul mood. 
He returned to the station and pushed Annie and Clarabelle toward the cattle dome. The nerve of that James, he vented to Percy, sat in his siding once more. He'd be stuck on the slow goods if it weren't for me and my branch line. I like the sound of a slow goods, Percy smirked, especially if it gets me away from your grumbling. Thomas's grumbling was about to keep Percy right where he was. A special livestock delivery had been scheduled for Percy's next train. The van sat at the cattle dock, the farmer about to herd the cows aboard. Unfortunately, the station master had forgotten this, and Thomas simply didn't care to look. Clarabelle was preparing to doze until James had gone, when something appeared in her path, and it was getting closer. Stop! Stop! She shrieked. It was no use. Thomas bumped the van, startling himself and letting off steam. Spooked, the cows gave distressed moves and took off in all directions. My cows! Percy shrieked from his siding. Thomas merely stuttered, but even this was drowned out by the stampeding cattle. Clarabelle, eyes shut tight, could only shiver in fright. Annie sighed, wondering how she'd landed herself in the middle of this kerfuffle. Above the clatter of the cows came the echo of a distant whistle. Thomas and Percy went pale. Before they could give the warning, James appeared, hissing and clanking. He hadn't noticed the cows, but he had noticed Thomas. Listen here, you little blue pest! I... Suddenly, James's wheels slipped fiercely, and with a bang, a great wheel of steam shrouded everything. Engines and railway men alike coughed and winced. At last, the smoke dispersed, they opened their eyes, and there was no sign of the cows. I didn't know you could do magic, James, Percy marveled. A sudden moo informed them the cows hadn't disappeared, but merely relocated right into the cattle van. Well, magic or not, that was some trick, chuckled the farmer. You've saved my herd. And a nasty scene, the station master gravely remarked. You're safe to bring your train into the station now. I'd love to, sir, James panted, but only I can't move. It's your own fault, his driver chimed in. With all that smoke and steam you made on the climb up, it's little wonder you ended up priming. Not only that, you've burst your cylinder caps, old boy, added the fireman. You're stuck. Not for long. I'll help. Thomas scurried from his siding ready to pull James and the coaches to the platform. Thank you, stammered James, disarmed. Thank you, chuckled Thomas. My branch was nearly a pasture. He sighed and looked at his buffers. You did keep your passengers safe, too. I'm sorry for being cross and for the bootlace remark. And I'm sorry for belittling you, James replied. You know, if I must come down a branch line, I'd rather it be this one. I quite like its inhabitants. You earned it, with or without me. There was silence. Now, don't ever mention bootlaces, or I'll never come round again. Both engines burst into hearty laughter. It's good to see you, James, Thomas smiled as the laughter died down. You see me at the junction all the time. Well, only in passing, I have to rush off and make up time when you lot delay me. As the two engines laughed and teased each other, the enthusiasts took their picture. You could say they were merely photographing engines number one and five at work. However, I like to think they were immortalizing a story a story of how a small action resolved a big quarrel. <laughs>